host is Fritz Sternberg. Well, uh, welcome from Macau, China. It's a little early here. It's about uh, 6 a.m. our time, but uh, I don't think there's been a whole lot of sleep going on this week. There's been a lot of activity, a lot of excitement here. Uh, literally, we're two days away from uh, a fight that everybody's talking about, and there's a lot of anticipation where Manny Pacquiao will be defending his WBO welterweight championship uh, belt against undefeated junior welterweight champion uh, Chris Algieri, who you know, may be one of the best stories, not just in boxing, but in uh, all of sports. And it's, uh, it's been a great ride for the past 10, 12 weeks since we started this tour. Uh, the media tour back in uh, August, uh, going 27,000 miles, and it all ends up here on Saturday night, live on pay-per-view, beginning at 9 p.m. East Coast, 6 p.m. West Coast. And we've gotten quite a few requests to get some last-minute uh, quotes and uh, first-person uh, reports, so we're happy to have the uh, trainers available with us one more time to do a conference call with all the U.S. media today. We're going to start the call off with Tim Lane from uh, Team Algeria. And as soon as he's finished, we'll bring on Freddie Roach to talk about Team Pacquiao. So without any further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce to you uh, Tim Lane. Tim, welcome to the call. Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, glad everybody could be here. Uh, looking forward to this weekend. It's going to be a great weekend. Chris is in great shape. Um, and yeah, we're looking forward to uh, bringing that belt back to New York. Terrific. Tim, you've been out here, I guess it's... Uh, been close to 10 days, a little over a week. Any um, problems adjusting uh, to the time change? I know you came from the West Coast, so we're looking at about 16 hours time there. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's, it's actually been, uh, it's been great. Um, Chris and I came over here for the world tour, um, and we, we learned a couple different things about what time we wanted to fly and uh, how we were going to eat and where, you know, how we were going to do our workouts. And, um, we, uh, we adjusted perfect. Uh, it took Chris uh, about one day to get on the time zone. It took me about two days to get on the time zone. Um, but, uh, but, but he's great. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't imagine it going any better uh, or for Chris to be in a better spot uh, considering the cir uh, circumstances that we're in right now. Thanks, Tim. Uh, operator, why don't we give instructions on how to ask questions, and then we'll open up the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to ask a question over the phone, please press the number one key. Again, if you'd like to ask a question over the phone, please press the number one key. Tim, while we're waiting for questions, what's the biggest surprise you have found uh, during this this whole promotion and the whole training camp? Uh, you know, obviously with only 20 fights under your belt, uh, this has to be kind of a new experience. Is there one thing or a couple things that stick out in your mind? Uh, yes, you know, Fred, what, what sticks out of my mind is, um, is, is how uh, nice uh, and generous people have been to us uh, when it comes to uh, the staff here at the Venetian, the staff from uh, all, the, all the different promotions, um, Top Rank and Star Boxing and Artie Palulo's um, uh, banner promotions, um, and the, the, the people, the people here... Um, uh, have just been uh, just been amazing. Uh, the the uh, the respect and the uh, and the love that they've shown Chris, uh, even the Filipino fans. You know, we go to breakfast every morning, and and we have uh, there's been mobs of people that um, that have come up and doesn't you know from all walks of life uh, that have come up and and just been uh, just showing so much love, and that that has actually surprised me because I thought um, you know I thought we were coming to a battleground, and we were going to have to. Um, you know, be uh, be kind of tough, and I, I I would prefer not to be tough. Um, I would prefer that when the bell rings, that we can take care of business. But outside of that, that we can all be human beings, and uh, it, it's it's been wonderful. That that has been surprising to me. That sounds great, um, operator. We have any questions? Our first question comes from Don Rafael from ESPN. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Hello, Tim. Morning, Don. How you doing? I'm doing very good. Uh, Tim, listen, my question for you is, uh, you know, you, you had the big win in June against Provodnikov when you guys uh, won the 140-pound the title, and now you're fighting Manny Pacquiao. It, it seems to me it's a, it's a totally different style, a totally different ball game, a totally different level of fight. And I wonder, from your standpoint, uh, the Ruslan fight was clearly Chris's biggest fight. It was your biggest fight, too, as a trainer, if, I, if my understanding is correct. And I wonder, when you go uh, on, on, well, Sunday morning for you guys in Macau, how do you keep from 
being overwhelmed by the moment. I've seen many fighters in my years covering boxing where guys have been great, you know, coming along and even winning titles, but they've gotten to the big, big moment and they've just gotten lost in the lights and just overwhelmed by the moment. How do you prevent that from happening both to you as well as to your fighter? Um, well, you know, Chris, uh, Chris has prepared and has dreamt about this night um, for, uh, for many, many years. And he has, um, uh, he, he, he's risen to the occasion of, of every event uh, that he's been in. And, and, and the greatest thing about Chris Algieri is uh, the better his competition and the better his opposition, the, the, the better he is. And, you know, what he did to Ruslan, he did it with one eye. Um, I, I, I thought he would have a flawless victory against Ruslan. I did not find that to be um, our, our toughest challenge. Um, but he ended up getting hurt uh, and hit in, in the first round. And um, when we were offered the Manny Pacquiao fight, um, I believe that this is not as, uh, as tough of a fight as Ruslan. Uh, Styles make fights. And Manny Pacquiao being a lefty uh, and what he brings to the table, I do not find that to be... Uh, as challenging as uh, as it was Ruslan, so I believe that uh, that Chris will dominate uh, 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 Pacquiao more so than he did Ruslan uh, with two eyes. Uh, oh, was that with two eyes? Did you say with two eyes? Yes, with with yeah, two, eyes. two eyes. Gotcha. He, so you're so you're saying that that you you actually think that that, that Pacquiao is an easier fight than Provodnikov? Yes, yes, I do. I, I think I'm not saying easier fight. I think it's a more simple fight. It was a more simple. Uh, game plan for myself uh, uh, to get across to Chris, but the biggest thing is um, that people don't know is Chris Algieri started his uh, uh, his, his, his 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 war um, in the in the ring with a lefty, which is myself. Um, he does better with lefties uh, than he does with righties. He's never been able to do certain things um, that, that 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 have come out in his style. Uh, against righties, but like against lefties, he's um, he's a he's a he's a totally different fighter. So I um, yeah, I have one other question for you. Uh, one of the things that uh, I talked to Freddie about uh, yesterday, I guess it was, and you know he's kind of been saying the same kind of things throughout the last, I guess, week or so, uh, saying that Pacquiao was talking about a first round knockout or an early knockout, and he's saying it's going to be an overwhelming victory, and you know whether it's talk or it's just what they really believe. Um, how does that make you feel when when they say? I mean, when you talk first round knockout, you're not even saying your opponent should basically be in the ring with you. Yeah, and you know what, Don? If 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 I was in Freddie's shoes, I would be I, I would be talking a lot too because um, he knows what the outcome of the fight's going to be, uh, and he's got to blow a bunch of smoke. And you know, it's um, you know, I, I feel for them. I I love Manny Pacquiao, but you know, he's 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 not beating Chris, and I I think uh, I think Freddie is aware of that. Um, and that's why he's barking. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Don. Our next question comes from Lundsatterfield with ringtv.com. Go ahead. Tim, you, uh, you partially asked, answered my question with um, regard to South Falls because I talked to Chris about that. But what can, what can Chris specifically gain from a guy like Judah um, you know, with help regarding Pacquiao and and how unique is Pacquiao than some of the other southpaws in terms of his angles, his foot movement, his ability to kind of pop from one place and materialize. Um, well, he can he, he can gain good experience from sparring with Zab because um, Zab is very fast and uh, very fast and. Uh, he is arguably uh, one of the best three or four round fighters ever in the world, as you see what he did with Floyd Mayweather in the first four rounds. Um, and it's it's, uh, it's 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 all about getting used to uh, to guys uh, coming at you from that angle. But there, you know, there, there's nobody out there that really does it uh, the way that Manny does it uh, with his footwork and his angles before he throws. But the footwork and angles they they. Um, they work on uh, uh, when, when, when you're hitting a heavy bag, uh, it looks really, really good and it's really, really fast. And when you have zombies in front of you that don't have footwork, um, you have a guy like, uh, like Manny Pacquiao that, that, looks, that looks amazing. But when you have someone with footwork um, that moves and it's not there, you know, those, those punches end up hitting air and you end up missing and it ends up, you know, confusing you. So, um, Manny's footwork and his speed and his angles, you know, they, it looks good, but Chris won't be there, and it's, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be confusing for him. 
All right, last question because you brought, because you use the phrase zombies. What 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 opponents of his qualify as zombies? Uh, well, I don't I don't I don't want to uh, I don't want to disrespect anyone and, and say names, but there are the opponents who were big guys um, or bigger than him, and they thought they were bigger than him. They had no footwork. They're tough guys. Um, the majority of the people in boxing games uh, are, are tough guys, um, just because they're you know because they're tough and they they, they come a long way. But uh, they're the guys that don't have footwork. The guys that stand in the middle of the ring and say, "Come on, I'm mucho macho." Uh, uh, you, you can't you can't beat Manny Pacquiao like that. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's the guys with no footwork. Chris, Chris made a reference to Antonio Margarito as the closest comparison in terms of height. I guess you know you, you, maybe would that be a reference for your comparison? Uh, <laughs> good guess, bro. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, yeah. Margarito is the guy who says, "Hey, come right here in the middle of the ring, um, and let's let let's trade, let's trade." I'm, you know, I'm tough, and you know, uh, yeah, that's the guy. Yeah. So as opposed to being a zombie, Chris is going to be what a ghost. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, he's gonna, you know, he, he's gonna be a master boxer. You know, he is. Um, he's on top of his game. He's sharper than ever. Um, he truly believes that this is the Chris Algieri show. Uh, so does his team, and um, and yeah, he, he's he's gonna he's gonna be uh, a little bit of everything that you think should be great about boxing. Thank you so much, Tim. I appreciate your time. Good luck. Thank you. Just a reminder to the audience: if you'd like to ask a question over the phone, please press the number one key. Again, if you'd like to ask a question over the phone, please press the number one key. Our next question comes from Michael Fridley with SureDog.com. Go ahead. Mr. Fridley, your line is open. Uh, one moment, please. Mr. Fridley, your uh, your perhaps your line is muted. Is that why that we can't hear you? with him and 
you know, discussed a couple, you know, a couple different things, and I decided to go with him. You know, Stitch, Stitch brings a lot more to the table than just being a, a good cut man. He's, um, he's a very vibrant human being um, that brings positivity to the table. Uh, I knew he would go well with our camp. Um, I asked him if he could, if he could be in our camp uh, every day when he's in town to help uh, wrap Chris and kind of, you know, be part of the family. And, and he's been. Uh, he's exactly what I thought he was going to be as an addition to Team Algeria. Gotcha. This, I know this came out earlier while we're waiting for this guy to come in queue. Um, this is really Chris's first full-time training camp where he hasn't had to have a part-time job to make ends meet. What has been the difference uh, since that, then that changed, that since he now can focus more? Um, man, the difference, Fred, has been, has been he's been able to do his job. You know, he's been able to... Uh, he's been able to get his rest, and he's been able to, um, you know, he and I have been able to go over his sparring and his fight tape and, um, and, and really, you know, spend some good time together um, outside, of, uh, outside of training. Normally it's like, you know, he trains, and then he's got to go train somebody else, and he has to travel to another gym, and he has to go here, he has to go there. Uh, for this camp, I would drive from my home in, in Las Vegas to the Venetian, uh, at 7 a.m., and then I'd stay there with him all day. We didn't really have to leave the building, and then I would go home at 9 o'clock at night um, and then and then repeat, you know, and on Sundays uh, he would send me a shopping list, and I would go get his food um, and bring it to him and, and, you know, restock the fridge, and and uh, it's, it's just been awesome. You know, this has been the first time he's been able to do it full-time, and um, he's been able to recover well and, uh, and just, you know, and, and, and do what he does as a, as a professional. So it's been really, uh, really, really great. That's terrific. Operator, we have any more questions for you? Just as a reminder to the audience, if you'd like to ask a question over the phone, please press the number one key. Again, if you'd like to ask a question over the phone, please press the number one key. I need, to, I, I need to talk a little more trash, man. I think I think you're answering everyone's questions too well. There's nothing for me to do. So uh, I'm just going to conclude with this. Tim's going to go out and do some work in a few minutes. So um, uh, before I let him make a concluding remark, I just want to also remind people that they can see the way in live. Uh, it'll be streamed on toprank.tv, www.toprank.tv, starting at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And we anticipate the main event stepping on the scale around 8, 10, uh, hold on, Fred. 12 p.m. ET. Oh, we do have another got, go No, hold, you got the, it's, um, the weigh-in show begins at 7 Eastern time. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. You're, you're on Mikhail time still? <laughs> okay. Understand. And what time will they be on the scale? Okay. Uh, between 7.05 and 7.10. Great. All right. Tim, we're going to make a last-minute remark here, and, uh, and then we'll move Freddie onto the call. Okay. Yeah, everybody, please tune in November 22nd. Chris Algieri, the new era of boxing, is going to show you who he is. And welcome to the Chris Algieri Show. That's it. And if you want one last look, it will be live. The weigh-in will be live on ESPN uh, uh, Friday night. So tune in at those times Ed just told you. Tim, thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you at the satellite tour in a couple hours. Yep. Thanks, Fred. Thank you. All right. And uh, I'm just going to put this on speaker and walk over to Freddie Roach, who I'm with. Hold on one second here. Can everybody, Ed, can you hear me? Yes, I can. It's perfect. Okay. I can hear you. I haven't heard Freddie yet. <laughs> well, uh, let me just wake him up. I have to usually rub his head first, so hold on a second here. Uh, my pleasure to introduce to you a Hall of Fame trainer and uh, Manny Pacquiao's longtime trainer, Freddie Roach. Freddie, welcome to the call. Oh, uh, yeah. Couldn't be better. Uh, Freddie, we just heard from Tim Lane. They're very excited uh, at the prospect of meeting Manny in two days. How has camp been going for you? How did, the, how did it go in the Philippines? We're very well. We had a great camp. Uh, Manny... Uh really buckled down on the training camp and is uh, really ready for this fight. Operator, can we just remind media on how to ask questions, please? If you'd like to ask a question over the phone, please press the number one key. Again, if you'd like to ask a question over the phone, please press the number one key. 
While we're waiting for um, the media to get into queue, Manny has said this several times this week that it feels like old times. It was like training for the Lawadwa fight and, and earlier fights you guys had together. What do you think he means by that? Well, we want to bring back a lot of the old the workout routines with Justin Portion, his old fans coach, being back on board. And we went back to the heavy bag a lot of the really heavy, hard, hard work. Not so much uh, the mitt where it's just more flashy. The heavy bag is just more, more useful, more strength. And uh, he just wants to go back to, have to get that fire back and start knocking people out again. You, this is like an old school approach? I mean, is that what you would look at? About pretty much, it? pretty much. We had old school pro- approach. He's in great shape. Uh, we used a lot of... Uh, strength work and had the heavy bag work and he, he's punching uh, better, better than ever and him coming back down to uh, a better weight uh, for him and instead of 147 he's fighting at 144 this fight he's better puncher at that weight and uh, we're going to have our first knockout in a while well I can't add to that so operator let's open it up for questions please our First question comes from Lem Satterfield with Ring TV. Go ahead. Hey, Freddie, how you doing? Hey, Lem. Hey, okay, so, you know, if you look at, you know, obviously, um, you know, Manny's last few opponents, De La Hoya, Hatton, Cotto, Claudi, Margarito, Mosley, Marquez, twice, you know, Bradley Rios, you know, those are all guys that he had incentive um, to beat. Um, you know, obviously, after the, the knockout loss to Marquez, you know, Brandon Rios uh, was a was a big comeback fight, and then obviously the Bradley fight, the get back fight. Is there, given you know the high stakes that there have been there in the past, is there any remote chance that he couldn't get up for this fight? No, not at all. The thing is, you know, he he feels a little bit uh, uh, that the, the uh, public or the press has really uh, downplayed him a little bit because he hasn't knocked anyone out lately, and he wants to. He wants that he gives that fire back and he wants a knockout and uh first time he's ever told me that he will knock this guy out. And I think that's motivation because the press is saying that he's lost his punch because he hasn't knocked anyone out in a while. And at one forty four the punch to come back. Now, is this is this guy, you know, he does have height, is is the tallest guy I think uh you know, that Manny fought was Antonio Margarito, completely different fighter, come forward fighter there to be hit. Um, can you just talk about what Algeria does do well? He runs very well. He, he, he will run for Manny, will have to cut the ring off, will have to fight, you know, cut, has to cut, cut the ring off and, fight, and set him in traps, and um, we will have to chase him down, but we will catch him. The last question is, you know, you've had you've had some some all star kind of sparring, you know, Mike Jones, Postal, um, you know, those guys. Are all of them better than Chris? Um, do they actually ac- accurately emulate his style? I think Postal does the best. Postal, and, you know, he's another guy with a very very good jab, and once he establishes that jab, and you get that going. He's very difficult to deal with, so he was the best sparring partner, I think, style-wise. Um, but the uh, overall, everyone worked out well. You know, Mike Jones worked out well for strength, but in case this guy wants to come at us, say he came forward, you know, and just uh, and took it to Manny a little bit. So whatever he brings to the table, we're ready for. What round is this going to end in, Freddie? About three. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Good luck. Yeah. You got an early flight to catch. <laughs> Just a reminder to the audience, if you'd like to ask a question over the phone, please press the number one key. Again, if you'd like to ask a question over the phone, please press the number one key. Freddie, the elephant in the room for this whole promotion has been uh, Mayweather. And, you know, we just saw a very humorous commercial for Foot Locker the other day. And, uh, yeah, you know, you're asked questions. Bob Arum's asked a lot of questions. Manny has asked a lot of questions about this. And it's been going on for, for several years. Is this in the back of your mind? Do you have to focus 
uh, Manny's attention on what's ahead of him immediately as opposed to looking ahead, even though there's nothing, you know, concrete. Well, you know, sometimes they tell Manny not to be the jury up too bad because then they was just going to run a little bit more. You know, he's scared of us now and he's going to be scared of us after we destroy this guy. But maybe, you know, show some balls and step up to the plate. Is that a legitimate fear? Do you, you worry that Manny could look too good and scare Mayweather away? Oh, definitely. For sure. How long a training camp was this? Manny said they started very early. Is 10 weeks? Is that basically what they did? Uh, I was in training camp for seven weeks. Just unfortunately started the camp with the training work two weeks before I got there. Yeah, you know. A 10 week camp all together and uh, Manny worked every day right through it. He worked very well. His, um, his strength and power is really, really there. He uh, was the heavy bag in the play five, six, seven, eight rounds a day on the heavy bag really hard. Just, uh, just go back to old school stuff because we've been, you know, we've been together for quite a long time now and just getting things again a little bit too repetitive. So we just started going back to the old school, the hard work, and uh, he responded greatly. He's going to be 36 next month. Uh, and you had made a statement earlier, maybe he's not as fast as Manny used to be, but he's still the fastest guy in the game. Do you still believe that? Oh, my father, Al Jerry thinks that he's the faster guy in there. He's going to be overwhelmed by Manny's speed. You don't know how to judge Manny's speed by watching him on TV. Once you get in the ring, he'll be shocked. That's why this guy's not going to last more than three rounds. You say he's not going to last more than three rounds. Manny's had guys um, on the hook, and he lets them off the hook recently. And I've heard you say, going back to the De La Hoya fight, this is your job, you have to knock him out. you think he's going to listen to you this time? I do. The thing is, he knows that the, uh, the, the sports writers and people question that he's lost his power, he's lost his punches and so forth. He's aware of that. He's not going to let this one go by. You've been in the ring with him a lot, wearing that body armor. Is his power any different, better, worse, the same? Explosion and power is much better. And um, he's really punching hard, believe me. That body suit, I, mean, I, I, I need a thicker one. Why? Why do you think he's punching harder now at a lighter weight? I think it's the speed. And when we put speed and power together, it, it, it means knockout. And that's what he's always done. I mean, this is much better way for him. 47, he's fighting guys going into the ring 160, much more durable guys. He's going to 44 for this fight. It's going to be a little lighter. He's going to be a little faster. Next fight will be at 40. And I think he's just more naturally 140 pounder than he is a 47 pounder. Operator, we have more questions in queue. Our next question comes from Ben Thompson with Fight Hype. Go ahead. Hey, Freddie. Actually, I, I think Fred pretty much stole every question that, that I had. But uh, I, I was wondering, um, is there any type of pressure or, or, or urgency to, to get the knockout against Algeri? No, I don't think there's any pressure. The thing is, I think it's something that Manny wants uh, we, but, we, you know, the thing is, we, we know that you can't go out there looking for a knockout, and you just got to set it up, man, and let, 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 let it happen, to be honest with you. And with his speed and power, the way he's punching, I believe it will happen, but we're not going out there looking uh, just to get a KO, early KO. Uh, we will set it up, and uh, it'll be by, by design and not by luck. Just, just based on, you know, everything that you know, all the tape that you've watched and everything, will you personally be satisfied if, if you know, the fight goes the distance and Manny doesn't get a knockout, or, 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 or are you absolutely expecting him to get a KO? I'm absolutely expecting a KO. I mean, this kid, he thought he was going to have a as a young fighter. Man, is an eight-time world champion. He's in way over his head. Wow. Are you, this this actual fight, this performance on, on Saturday or, or Sunday for you guys, are you, are you wanting Manny to look spectacular? In, in other words, 
are you hoping for Manny to make a statement in order to just kind of, um, you know, build up that buzz again to where it was as far as the Mayweather fight is concerned? Yeah, I mean, basically, uh, I'm on a great, great performance, but again, I wanted the Mayweather fight to happen, so maybe we'll let him last a couple more rounds. <laughs> no doubt, Freddie. Well, that's all I got, Fred. You pretty much got all my other questions in, so I appreciate that, guys. Good luck, man. Sorry about that. Thanks. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> our next question. Uh, I think Dan Rayfield's in queue. Hey, Dan. Operator? Uh, our next question comes from Dan Raphael with ESPN. Go ahead. Thanks a lot, hey, Freddie. Um, uh, after uh, we spoke yesterday, I saw the uh, the commercial that uh, Foot Locker unveiled of uh, Manny, you know, advertising their, their sneaker week, but making fun of Mayweather. And uh, I don't know, did you get a chance to see the, the commercial, first of all? Uh, no, I didn't. I'm sorry. No. Oh, you haven't. Fred, what are you doing? You got to show Freddie the, the, the commercial. Uh, Freddie's being modest. He actually directed the commercial. <laughs> okay, so if you didn't see it, are, are you aware of what was... Because I found it to be very humorous. I just wanted uh, your take yeah, on, man, on the yeah, humor man, that yeah, Mayweather man. brought to that particular situation where he's able to basically make fun of the fact that this fight that everybody has wanted to see for so long has still not happened. And they did it brilliantly where they didn't even mention Floyd's name, but it was obvious what was going on. Um, do you ever hear him talk about Floyd in training at all, or is it something that just goes unspoken? No, no, he's uh, been talking more and more about Floyd. More time goes by, more he talks about it. He wants to fight badly. And, you know, after seeing Floyd's last couple of fights, he wants him even more. And um, he just wants to prove that he's the best fighter in the world. And uh, he will take that zero and put it, give him his first one. All right, Freddie, thank you. Good luck on Saturday. And Fred, make sure you show Freddie Roach that commercial. I'll do it. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. Freddie, considering, you know, if Manny gets through this successfully as you expect, this will be his second. He'll finish this year with feats um, of two undefeated world champions. You think that qualifies him as a fighter of the year again? Uh, possibly, but the thing is, I think uh, we need maybe a little higher quality opponents. Mayweather, yeah, we knock him out. We get further in the year. Any other questions in queue, operator? This is a, just as a reminder to the audience, if you'd like to ask a question, please press number one key. Again, if you'd like to ask a question, please press number one key. And our next question comes from Lem Satterfield with ringtv.com. Go ahead. Just to follow up, Freddie, um, I read some uh, a, a story where you actually kind of said you don't think that the Mayweather fight will happen. Um, and I don't know if you were casting doubt on whether you actually thought that talks were seriously happening. Um, can you address that? Am I right or wrong? What are your thoughts on it? Well, um, it's been three and a half years. I've been waiting for this fight for a long time. I've been anxious to get ready for this fight. I do like challenges. Mayweather's dead pro. He does, you know, he is a challenge. He's a good fighter, I think. But I'm just so tired of people asking me if, I, if the fight's going to happen and so forth because I I can't give them a real true answer because this guy keeps running away and running away and running away. I mean, if he's the best fighter in the world, step up to the plate. Freddie, I won't ask you anymore. Thank you so much and good luck next week. Good luck Saturday. Thank you. Great. Freddie, you got a a busy night ahead of you. You got three of the four pay-per-view fights. Uh, you're working with um, Antonio DeMarco on his title challenge. Uh, Zhao Shiming in a title eliminator, where if he wins, he'd be fighting for a world title here in Macau in February. How do you do all this? Uh, you don't. You don't have much time to even change your corner jacket. So how do you prepare and actually perform? You know, working corners for three consecutive fights. Well, you know, I, I, I have some great helpers, and um, my staff works really well. We work together. But this is a bit, bit busy night, no, no doubt about that. And uh, just wrapping hands is going to be really busy. But the uh, thing is, um, you know, I will have um, my, my guys getting any warmed up while I'm out with you. I'm 
And uh, as soon as Jimmy fight ends, I run back to the dressing room and do the final uh, warm up, warm up with Manny. And uh, it's just uh, be, you know, it's just it's part of part of being busy. It's uh, you know a lot of minutes every day. It's really good. I, I, it makes me work hard. I've lost like eight pounds. I'm getting a little too chubby. I found one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I like working, and uh, I love I love what I do. Well, while we're talking about Antonio DeMarco and Zhao Shiming, tell us what you anticipate with these fights and, and how they've been looking, and uh, any concerns and, and non-concerns uh, as they come into Saturday night's fights. Well, DeMarco, the DeMarco fight is going to be, I think, the, it might steal the show. It's going to be a great fight. DeMarco's in great shape. A lot of people tell me, like, he's washed up and so forth. I said, he's not. He punches a little hard. He's strong. He's going up against a very good opponent who hasn't really looked that good in his last couple of fights. Maybe a lot of people thought he maybe lost those fights and got, 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 got a couple of gifts a little bit early. Christmas is not coming to you this time. You, you know, DeMarco's coming to knock you out. So it's a good fight. Shemaine's going against the, uh, a guy with a great record. Um, not very well known because he's a Thai fighter, and uh, but he is like a Manny Pacquiao lookalike. <laughs> and uh, they were calling him uh, Mini Pacquiao the other day at the press yeah. conference. But um, I don't think he can fight like Pacquiao. But um, Shemaine's come along well. He's starting to punch a lot better, and uh, I really I'm look, I'm I'm looking for Shemaine to really really make a statement in this fight and. We're close to the, uh, the title fight afterwards. Um, there's been some talk about Antonio DeMarco uh, dedicating this fight to his uh, younger sister who's suffering from cancer. Any, um, did you see any, any, did it affect his training at all for this fight? You know, he had some bad days. He had some tough days. In a couple of days, he just started thinking about that and he, you know, just, um, you know, almost crying and he just he cared about his, his family and his sister a lot. And, um, it was very hard for him to be away in the Philippines, being so far from his family, not being able to care for her. And I told him the best way to care for her is to win this fight. It's going to bring, bring your life back. And, uh, so. Um, I, I think I, I think we turned around and turned that into a positive uh, thing. And uh, Demarco's in great shape. He's punching really hard, and I I expect big things out of Demarco. Uh, one last question about the Demarco fight. This is the first time you've been in the same ring with Roy Jones Jr. I know there's a little weight difference between you two, but you guys will be working opposite corners. Any thoughts on uh, Roy? Said this is his first champion he's ever trained. He's trained other fighters, but never a world champion. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, he's a great fighter, and uh, he's, a, he's a, he maybe going to retire soon, and w which I, I think he should, and uh, get, get, get in the training and, you know, he share his knowledge with the rest of the world. I mean, he's been a great fighter. I think he should be a great trainer, and he knows the game very well, and um, it, it will be some competition. No, 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 no doubt about that. As a former fighter yourself, what advice would you give Roy in terms of the transition from going from fighter to trainer? Well, he knows that work hard and good things happen. You know, push the fighters, teach them what you know. And, you know, he's a very slick fighter. He knows a lot of tricks. And uh, um, to have a guy like that in your corner, it, it can't hurt. Is there, a, is there a frustration level when you're a fighter and you know how things should be done and... Uh, is there any kind of impatience when you see somebody taking it a little slower in terms of learning? Or how do you take the patience to teach these guys? Well, you know, a guy like Roy Jones, that's the thing sometimes. They're so talented, they expect everyone to, to pick up really quickly and so forth. He's got to be a little bit patient because nobody's really quite as good as he was. You know, the thing is, he shouldn't expect his fighters to be able to do what he do right away. He's got to work with them and take his time. And that's the big thing where you take your time, they'll get it. It'll come across a little slower than, than what you learned, learned that, but it's just taking time and be patient. Operator, any more questions in queue? Our yeah, next question comes from Ismail Abdul Salam with beatboxingmayhem.com. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Freddie, I wanted to ask you, being that you're so confident that a knockout is going to happen, what punch do you see Manny ending this fight with? His left hand. 
knocked me down with him in training. He knocked me down in training? <laughs> when he hit me on the chest and then knocked me down and I did a somersault. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, being that you know Manny's accomplished so much, most people are expecting him to win this fight. Just your personal opinion, how long do you conceivably see Manny continuing to fight at his age, at a high level? Well, as long as he keeps training like he is, he, I, I, I don't see an, an end yet because his dedication and his desire to work is really unbelievable. He trains harder than any fighter I've ever known. He still trains that way. Um, his dedication and his desire is great. And until that ends, I think he's, yeah, it's endless at this point. I mean, he's really, really always in good shape. We have great training camps. He works really hard. And uh, um, I think this might be the best training camp ever. But his dedication and his desire and his focus has been really, really good for this training camp. Perfect. And my final question would be, being that we all know that the Cold War is supposed to be over with, we've heard people like Danny Garcia's name being mentioned a little bit, possibly, if uh, Manny gets by this fight. What do you think about that fight uh, as a potential matchup as an alternative to the Mayweather fight not happening? Well, Garcia's a tough guy. And, and you know, one thing about Garcia, he will throw. He's a uh, he's heavy, uh, heavy puncher. Um, he knocked out Amir Khan. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's, he, I, I think he's a very good opponent for Manny Pacquiao. And, you know, the thing is, uh, he, Manny would have to box him, I think, and not, not, not exchange with him so much. But, uh, I, I think it'd be a great fight. And, uh, he, he's a fight that I was, uh, I would love to see and love to, I think the fans would love to see. And that's what we want to give the people. Good fight. So I think Danny Garcia would be a great opponent. He says he wants to move up to 147. I hope he solves that a little bit because we're going out before you to meet me with you, Danny. Perfect. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Our next question comes from Ben Thompson with Fight Hype. Go ahead. Uh, just, just a quick follow up, Freddie, and, and, and kudos to Fred for for continuing the combo and and. and I'm starting my brain here a little bit, but um, it, it, assuming everything goes well and, um, you know, Manny is potentially, you know, looking to come back maybe in April or something like that. I think traditionally he's, he's fought again in, in April. Um, but if he does fight in April of next year and, and the Cotto Canelo fight gets done for, for May, is that going to be a problem for you as far as training both of those guys? I mean, would they do kind of like a, a joint training camp, so to speak? No, I don't think we're going to do a joint training camp. Uh, I want to keep those two guys a little bit separate because uh, you know, they both deserve individual time. And the thing with Cotto, I just talked to him last night. December 7th, he will be in my gym. And we will start working just to get a uh, little head start on um, what we look forward to. And Cotto you know, is a very dedicated guy. But the thing is, Manny's next fight won't be in China. It'll be in the United States uh, from, what, from what we see. And that means training camp will be at the wild card in L.A. And they'll both be training at my gym in L.A. And uh, we'll start. I won't, I, won't, I won't work them together. I will separate them and have a totally separate training camp. But in the same location? or Yes. Okay. The morning and afternoon or something? Yes. Okay. You, you, you've got both guys. I mean, obviously, Cotto and, and, and Manny are, are, are both fighting in, in weight classes that some you know some people would consider a little bit above their, their natural weight. Do you prefer for both of them? I mean, I know you're already talking about Manny going back to 140, but do you also kind of prefer for maybe... Miguel to, to come back down to 154, or are you okay with him staying up, up at 160? Well, you know, the thing is there's some great competition at 160. You know, uh, the, 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 the fight that we hope will come up, kind of coming up with uh, Alvarez is a great fight. And, you know, if we, you know when we get with that fight, then it's, you know, Triple G out there, everyone's talking about it. You know, he's got nobody to fight. I think Miguel Zoto will kick his ass. So I just think we can help 
box that guy. I don't think he's unbeatable. He's a good fighter, I know. But thinking, uh, you know, we love challenges, and that that's a great challenge for us at 160. One, one last question. I, I don't know all the details. I didn't do too much research, but I did see a couple of headlines uh, about your good friend, Mickey Rourke, um, coming back for another fight uh, uh, over in Russia. Do, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I heard it was an exhibition he might be going over there, and I hope we can keep it at that. And, uh, you know, Mickey's getting a little bit older now, and uh, I don't want to see anyone get hurt. That's all I got. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. And, and, and again, good luck, man. Thank you. You don't think Mickey's going to be the stuntman in this fight? Um, maybe. He's <laughs> 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 good makeup, man. Maybe he's going to be the stuntman. Maybe Mickey just loves boxing, and uh, he trains Marvin every day. And, uh, you know, he, but he's in the 60s and so forth. And, uh, again, uh, maybe an exhibition against uh, someone of his own, his own same level would be interesting in Russia. You wouldn't compare him to Bernard Hoppe? No, I won't. Okay. I wouldn't do that to Bernard either. Um, we're going to wrap this call up. We have a satellite tour coming up soon and then fighter meetings. Uh, it's been a terrific call. I thank everyone for joining us. Uh, again, we are live on pay-per-view this Saturday night. Pacquiao. And Algeri for the World Welterweight Championship live from Macau, 9 p.m. East Coast, 6 p.m. West Coast. And for those of you who would like to see the weigh-in live, it will be on ESPN Friday night. Uh, and the show begins at 7 p.m. East Coast time. And I believe we will be stepping on the scales at 810. Is that what we're looking at? Or 710? Well, tune in to www.toprank.tv either way or ESPN and you'll see it live. Thank you again, and uh, we'll see you Saturday night live on pay-per-view. Bye.